what is the best 1080p monitor in 2021? Well, there's no single best monitor, but rather a few great picks, depending on your budget and what you want to use the monitor for. I've reviewed lots of 1080p monitors throughout the year and will present you my top recommendations for different usage profiles. We'll be covering the best ones for creative stuff like photo editing, super budget picks and of course the best ones for gaming. In any of those cases, I assume that you're at least somewhat interested in gaming on your monitor because I mostly cover gaming related stuff on my channel. So even the choices for content creation will essentially be gaming monitors that excel with their picture quality. For me, a 1080p monitor usually is a more budget-friendly monitor. Yes, there definitely are some very expensive 1080p monitors out there and there also are pretty affordable 1440p options. But generally, 1080p gives you more bang for the buck, especially when it comes to gaming. Thus, almost all monitors we'll be looking at in this video are relatively affordable. Starting off with the best ones for creative people who want to do things like photo editing, color grading videos or graphic design, our panel technology of choice is IPS. This will give us the best viewing angles and overall picture quality from all panel types that are available outside the super high-end segment. And have two monitors for you to choose from. The first one's the MSI G241. Of course it has an IPS panel, but this one in particular has an exceptionally high contrast ratio of almost 1500 to 1. That's great for creative stuff as this makes things like dialing in the black level when grading much easier than on a lower contrast panel and it makes your work just look nicer. Color-wise, we get pretty vivid colors, especially considering that the G241 often retails for considerably less than $200 US. Now, for editing, a wider color gamut means you definitely need to use an ICC profile. Ideally, you would perform an individual calibration and profiling, but yes, many colorimeters are more expensive than this monitor, so you can also just use the ICC profile that I provide in the video description of my review of the G241. Of course, I will have this review and all the other reviews for all the other monitors that are about to come linked down below. Now, if you want a monitor that's color accurate out of the box, there's only one that I've come across that actually provides that. The Mobius EX2510. This monitor has an sRGB mode that actually deserves its name and gives us very accurate sRGB performance without calibration. Yes, it's more expensive than the G241, but it also has some other things going for it, like for instance the adjustable stand and great response times performance. This is a very versatile monitor and thus it won't be the last time we'll be talking about the EX2510 in this video. Now, if gaming is your top priority, I got three monitors for you to choose from. I frequently recommend all three and they perform pretty similar when it comes to gaming. But they do differ in price and their feature set. Starting off with one that I just recently reviewed, the Gigabyte G24F. It's a very fast IPS monitor. In fact, it ranks among the fastest IPS that are currently on the market. Colors are vibrant, which is good for visibility in-game, and adaptive sync works without a flaw. On top of that, it even has an ever so slightly higher refresh rate than our average gaming monitor, coming in at 170Hz instead of 144. So obviously, the G24F is a monitor that I can highly recommend for gaming. And depending on where you live, this might actually be one of the cheapest 24 inch IPS that are available. Now of course I will leave all monitors linked down below as well as my full reviews. I highly recommend checking out the full review before buying because even highly recommendable monitors like the G24F aren't without some flaws and quirks. Now almost everything I said about the G24F is true for the ASUS VG249Q as well. It's equally as fast, adaptive sync works perfectly as well and overall this in terms of its overall performance is very similar to the G24F. It really doesn't make much of a difference which one you choose. Yes, the ASUS is a 144Hz monitor as opposed to the 170Hz of the Gigabyte, but this isn't a huge difference. It really comes down to what they cost in your region and maybe whether you prefer the design of one or the other. Now, as I told you just a minute ago, the Mobius EX2510 that I recommended for creative people is a very versatile monitor. And I can also highly recommend it for gaming. It's just as fast as the Gigabyte and ASUS and thus deserves to be one of my three top recommendations in the gaming category as well. 
As an added benefit, it's the only one out of this trio that has a decent backlight strobing mode, which of course is nice to have. Now if you're a sweaty tryhard, you might be shocked that my recommendations for gaming monitors don't include a single TN panel monitor. And yes, for the average and even ambitioned gamer, I strongly believe that TN has become almost irrelevant due to how fast the other panel technologies have gotten. That being said, for competitive gamers, TN monitors can still be the best choice. And one of the best monitors for competitive gamers is the Omen X25. It's a 240Hz TN panel monitor with extremely fast response times. In fact, it's the fastest monitor I've reviewed to date. Of course, this is not a monitor you'd want to use for anything else than playing things like first-person shooters thanks to that TN panel, which in terms of picture quality really is a relict of the past. But it's nothing short of excellent when all you care is dominating in games like Valorant. A slightly more budget-friendly and more readily available option is the Zaui XL2411K, which also relies on a TN panel. As opposed to the Omen, this is just a 144Hz monitor, which these days really is the bare minimum for competitive gaming. But the XL2411K has a very good backlight strobing mode, which makes it a worthy pick. At least if you're not someone that gets headaches from backlight strobing, and bear in mind that you need to fiddle with the factory menu to get the best out of this monitor. If that's nothing that appeals to you, you still can fall back to my three top recommendations for regular gaming, which all will perform nicely for more competitive gaming as well. Now so far all these options have been relatively affordable, but if you're looking for an absolute bargain, you might consider the monitors I'm about to show next. Of course, prices these days can fluctuate quite a bit and generally can be very different from region to region. For many people though, these probably are among the most affordable options that are available. First up we have the Yammer GB2470HSU. This is a classic 24 inch IPS monitor with a refresh rate of 165Hz. There's really nothing particular flashy or catchy about this monitor, it's just really good at almost everything. It's pretty fast, has decent colors and a pretty good contrast ratio of almost 1400 to 1. It doesn't manage to be the best in a single category, but it's a really solid performer overall and might be the cheapest option in your region. Now if the Yammer isn't available, there still is the good old AOC 24G2. This monitor has been a strong budget recommendation for years now and it still is a solid performer if you can find a good deal for it. Especially in the US or the UK, you might be able to get it for a very compelling price, often a good amount cheaper than some of the other options I've mentioned in this video. Generally, there isn't much to hate about the 24G2 for its price. Though keep in mind that there are two different versions available that have the exact same name and appearance, but either version does come with a different panel. Both versions have their pros and cons and generally are a good pick, but if you want to find out which version you're about to get, you have to check the serial number. I've done a whole video about that, which also compares both versions side by side. I will leave that link down below. Now, if you're lucky, you might also be able to get the Gigabyte G24F for the same price as the Yamaha or AOC. If that's the case, this would be what I'd go for. It's definitely worth keeping an eye out for a good deal on the G24F. Now, if you don't mind spending a bit more and want to get the most versatile monitor, I recommend the Mobius EX2510. And that doesn't really come unexpected. I already presented the EX2510 as a top recommendation for content creation and again for gaming. The Mobius ranks among the best in many categories and really has a lot going for it. The only real downside is its relatively high price. Now, some of you might be wondering why I didn't recommend a single monitor that's larger than 24 inches. The answer is that I personally think that 1080p don't go well with 27 inch or even bigger diagonals. Stretching full HD across 27 inches gives us a pixel density of just 82 pixels per inch, which is a bit too low for my liking. Our classic 1080p 24 inch monitor gives us 93 ppi, 
while a 27-inch monitor with a 1440p resolution even has 109 pixels per inch. You could argue that you would place a larger monitor farther away and thus wouldn't be able to spot the lower resolution. But in my experience, most people have their monitors pretty close regardless of the monitor's size or resolution. Therefore, I recommend sticking to 24-inch monitors when it comes to 1080p. As always, I've got all the monitors I've mentioned linked down below. And those are affiliate links, by the way, so you can support this channel by using these links to buy something. In case you want to show a more direct support, I've now got a Patreon as well. Thanks for watching, bis zum nächsten Video.